You're listening to Paris' State of Mind on Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Radio. Welcome to Paris, a state of mind. Join us as we talk about the good, the bad, the ins, the outs of property rentals and purchases in and around Paris. We'll have topics for renters, owners, and visitors, share questions we are regularly asked, and more. My name is Gail Boisclair of Perfectly Paris, and my co-host is Marie Pistinier of Lokim Paris Be a Part of It. Both of us are proud members of the SPLM, the first representative body of furnished rental professionals. We are back again, Marie. How are you? I'm very fine, thank you. How are you doing? Good to be back uh, in the studio. Yes. It's been a while though. Well, and especially I'm really loving our whole new series about the arrondissements of Paris. And there's so much to talk about for each of them. Hopefully our last podcast from arrondissements one to nine were interesting to our listeners to discover a little bit more about the different areas and to, I guess, get our take on kind of what we think about it. But there's so many districts in Paris that we couldn't possibly cover them all. So uh, I guess now today we're going to start with number 10, right? And 11. Yes, exactly. So for me, those two arrondissements, it can be really changing from a street to another. One of the very interesting things is the, the canal, because we do have some canals which come from Bastille, which goes up to the Lillet. And it's very nice. It's a very nice area to hang around. A lot of restaurants and a lot of and people are just doing like during the summertime, a lot of picnics and get together around. Yeah, I really, as you say, love, um, especially in the summertime, to hang uh, out on the canal because they've got those little electric boats that you can rent and you can go for rides and have picnics, apero or whatever on the canal. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun things you can do in nice summer days and stuff like that. I find that in the evening, sometimes along the canal, it can get maybe a little bit touch and go. But, I mean, it's the nature of the area uh, because you've also got in the 10th all the big uh, Gardenor train station and um, that makes it a little bit of a, a difference sometimes to an area when you're close to train stations and things like that. There's often, you know, I don't know, sometimes we can say the word sketchy, but we don't want to say it's sketchy. Yeah, but it's an area which is um, evolving. Not fast enough sometimes, but <laughs> it's it's going good way. Yeah, no, it's totally, totally evolved. I've seen so many changes in my 20 years for being here, 20 plus years to be uh, for certain. But I also go uh, around the Gardenor area because there's a lot of um, fabulous uh, Indian and Sri Lankan restaurants. And that's where I also do my shopping for any groceries like Indian or Sri Lankan foods that I want to get to. Yeah, all the spices and everything. I love that. And I mean, I don't know, the 11th? What do you think about the 11th? Yes, um, there is little, I I like the, um, for me, it's a very, it's a place where a lot of people are living, but not for nightlife, not for this kind of thing. You have all the pop and cool area, but it's the same. It's, it used to be a bit different, but it's evolving. You have more families, you have more, it's like this. So it's, I don't, I don't go that much close by. Even though it's not very far from where I live, but it's true that I'm not, it's not one of the only small or part of the, of the 11th that, that I'm going to. It's funny. I feel the same way about the 11th. I really, I hardly go there as well. Uh, I'll go to the 10th, but I virtually rarely ever go to the 11th. Yeah. Not because we don't like it, just, just like that. We don't that. know it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So that takes us to the 12th. Yeah, the 12th arrondissement. It's funny because the little place you mentioned for the 12th um, are not the one I would I would go for. I, I would think more about like the little Place d'Aligre where you have this open air market every every day. That's great. Just but it, which is every day you have a lot of food shops uh, around. So this is one of the things that I'm thinking about. And of course, you have also the Coulet Vert, which is uh, the space where people can run, walk. It's like a kind of the, like, um, how do we say, in, like in New York, like the, the, the walk line, no? Uh, along the Hudson River, they, they had this, it's on a higher level. 
mm-hmm. they rearranged the walks. It used to be like where the train was were coming and bringing all oh, the the thing, yeah. and uh, it's it's a bit like that. Like it's close from the from the Gare de Lyon, and it has been reinvented in order to have some green around. And of course, the Bois de Vincennes. Yeah. Yeah, actually, that's true. I didn't think about that, but you're right. And uh, yeah, I have a a good friend that recently moved to the 12th and uh, they have a dog and they love it because they always go to the Bois de Vincennes to um, take the dog for a run, walk, so on and so forth. Yeah, very nice. It's a a pretty good area, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love that. So let's cross the sand. Let's go to the 13 now on this map. Okay, I'm swimming now. I'm swimming. <laughs> I think the 13th is actually quite interesting and it has changed quite a lot. A lot. You know? In a few years. Yes, very recently. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. I mean, in the beginning, when I hear of the 13th, I think of like Place d'Italie or Chinatown, primarily Chinatown and things like that. But there's so many, or Bibliothèque Nationale, but there's so many things. It's become so artistic as well because they have this area... um, It used to be old, a refrigeration factory or something. And it's called Les Frigo right now. Yeah, okay. And so now in that area, it's all, they've got a, a big bunch of artist community that work there and people can go in and check it out and things. So it's become a lot more hip than what you might think. Yeah. They have also this, what, what the name is Station F, which is a kind of a place where you have incubators for startup companies. So that brings also a lot of uh, younger people and uh, uh, a lively thing. And you have big companies also in the 13th. Like I remember like the big consulting companies who have like whole buildings, brand new building that there there is. So it's an interesting uh, arrondissement as well. And it's true that it's been a few years. They had a lot of constructions and it's uh, it's really becoming a, a, a very nice. And also the banks. Because the banks close to the 13 used to be not that very, that, that interesting, but a part of them are uh, completely changed. So you can really uh, enjoy the banks and the side of the, of the river. Yeah, I really like anyway how the 13th has evolved. But, but carrying on, we've now got like the 14th and the 15th around these small. Yeah, those are two very large around these small Paris. 14 arrondissement is for me, yes, it's the Gare Montparnasse, which is like the main, like when you see on the map, it's like taking so much of <laughs> the space <laughs> that uh, it's um, the thing to, to see. But it's really at the limit, the Gare Montparnasse is at the limit with the six arrondissement. So it's really easy to go from an arrondissement to another. And it's true that this area is known for like, you have many restaurants, especially Breton, Restaurant Breton, because it used to be where the Breton were arriving in Paris. And actually, when you go to Brittany, you have to pass by the Gare Montparnasse. You have no way to, <laughs> to do that uh, elsewhere. You have also some, uh, I know that you have a lot, also a lot of places where of uh, theater, of places where you can see musicals as well. It, there is a lot of things. And it's a lot, there is a lot of people living there because it's a very large arrondissement. And for me, it's more, um, it's funny because, because my idea is like it's, everything is more modern. Uh, even the building, all the building we used to manage in this area of very like very classical modern building built like like in the past uh, 50 years and uh, something like that yeah that's true and i mean that's also true to a certain extent about uh the 15th as well too in terms of modern buildings yes they definitely have old but they have quite a lot of modern uh buildings as well too in the 15th Exactly. And the 15 is like one, I think it's the largest, uh, like the biggest uh, arrondissement of Paris. It's, if you want to live in the 15, you really have to look at a, at a subway map first because you can go, if you, if you are at Ballard, which is like the, the very hand, so far the very hand of the subway. And, uh, if you are like right at the between, between the 15 and the 7th, you have several stations in between and you can really be very far from the closest subway station. So you have to check the buses and the subway if you'd like to be to be there. But it's uh, it's true that there is a lot of people and family living there, students as well, because there is a lot of schools close by, uh, like university level. And you have all this area, like the Grenelle uh, Center, like the mall center that is kind of modern things Yeah. that are along the Seine. Beau Grenelle. 
Yeah, Bogronel, yeah, sorry. Not the type of things where, uh, of type of, of places where I, I used to go, but <laughs> I know that there is, um, it has a lot of success. Yeah, it's true. Um, I know when Beaugrenel first opened, I've got some friends that live in the 15th and they kind of, oh, wow, they've got all these, you know, it was because these were North Americans living in uh, the 15th. Well, they still live in the 15th. So for them, it was kind of like, oh, wow, it's like a North American style yeah. shopping, uh, shopping center. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I've actually never been in. Me too. Me yeah, too. Ever. But I see that, you know, when, when you are on the other side of the sand and when you, you see them, yeah, you, you, you have a little impression of like a very urban uh, American uh, uh, city. So it's interesting. Yeah, kind of. But the, the 15 can be really close to the 7th. I mean, like there is a large frontier between with the 7th and the 15th. And we have all those places. And I remember when we had like, uh, when I was doing vacation rental, where owners like were like, okay, I'm just right close to the 7th. Why can I rent, raise the price per night? And it's true <laughs> that because people were just looking and said, okay, this is a 15. It's way far from the 7th, even though it was like two streets away. Yeah. And it, as you say, it is a very large uh, arrondissement, so it really depends on where you live. There's very charming areas that are very kind of neighborhood-like with, with older buildings, typical Parisian buildings. But yes, there are so many that have been built up with all this these modern skyscrapers, literally skyscrapers. Yeah, it's true. True. Should we jump above the Seine and go back to the to the right bank? Okay. <laughs> Let's hop over to the 16th. Yeah, 16. Like, kind of, for me, it's like, it's almost the countryside. Like, it's it's way too far <laughs> from where I, I used to live and, uh, and I used to work. But we do have actually some apartments for rent in that area. But when we have some viewings or if we have to go there, for some maintenance, then you, you have really just get to get your schedule uh, square because it's it's also it's like the fifteen. You can go very very far. And for me, it's a very classical, green, quiet, large streets. And I know that people who are living there they love the village life. But for for me, it's it's very far from what I like in terms of. Uh, it's very nice, very safe, very um, clean. I don't, I virtually never go to the 16th. It's true. The area Passy is kind is popular. Yeah. You know, the Passy area is popular. It's, it's charming with its market and so on and so forth. But I think overall, it seems, I don't know, it, it's, it seems too quiet, really. I find yeah. that it, I guess if you have family, if you're here uh, living in Paris or coming to Paris for a while and you've got families and you want to put your kids maybe into, say, English schools, you've got, you know, it's a good area to be in. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> I don't feel that it is, uh, there's anything typically Parisian about it. No, but I think that it's because we don't go there. I think that the it's, it's a uh, no go zone. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know that there, there is this uh, this amazing um, I think this uh, Orthodox church. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Like with the very uh, like typical uh, the, the church is amazing. Like the ceiling, the the um, ah the roof is like a. Shining and it's it's very nice and this is pretty unusual and you have also all the park close, close by because you have Boulogne you have all those green it's it's very green and you have all for those who love the tennis then you do have the um, the Roland Garros which is the Roland Garros right there yeah. I, I don't like tennis. I'm not coordinated enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that I, I, I'm not very fan of that because I, I still can't follow the rules and <laughs> the way they count the points. <laughs> If you are enjoying this episode of Paris State of Mind, you may also be interested in our sister podcast, Navigating the French. Join Emily and an expert who take a deep dive into a world that helps us better understand the French. Paris State of Mind will be right back after a word from our sponsors. Now back to Paris, a state of mind. So, okay, so I see that we are not that much into the 16, though, but uh, no. let's go, then let's move on to the 17, which is more like the next two will be more than your arrondissement because it's, it's, yeah. it's where you are used to, to be around. 
Definitely. Yeah, the 17th is great. They've got the area, Batignol area, which I absolutely love. Uh, they've got also the area around Parc Monceau, the Monceau area mm -hmm. a little bit. And then, of course, they've got like Perrier, Tern, and all of that as well. So it's it's quite a vast arrondissement. It differs quite a bit depending upon what area of that part of the 17th you are in. I find that the part that I like the best is the part closest to the 18th mm -hmm. that is uh, around the Batignol area. As I mentioned earlier, you've got Pont Cardinet, which now the line 14 stops at. There are plenty of fun, funky neighborhood bistros, cool boutiques. You've got a lot of green space, actually, in the 17th. You've got the Square de Batignol. You've got Park Martin Luther King, which also borders on the outskirts of Paris, Clichy. And then, of course, you've got Parc Monceau. You've got huge parks. I don't know. It's a very, it's definitely a very fun area. Uh, you've got all kinds of market areas as well, too. Uh, by Tern, you've got a good market street just off of Metro Villiers uh, on Rue de Livy. You've got a fabulous market street there, too. You have the organic uh, market uh, once a week on the Boulevard de Batignol. What do you think? Yeah, it's a nice area. I don't think a lot about the 17th, I have to say. <laughs> I don't go that much there either. I, for me, I used to have some apartment, but I remember the owners were always like, of course, when you are close to 10, you feel that it's more valuable than when you are at Pont Cardinet, for example. People are, uh, and if so, you have a portion which is close to Clichy. And I don't know it very well. After I know that it's very convenient, it's direct. My office is in the second arrondissement, so it's very direct with the line three. So I know that it's a lot of people love uh, this is a 17 because it can be quickly in the very center of Paris. So this would be my uh, my little um, addition to this uh, to this 17 arrondissement explanation. But I will not go too far because really I uh, I don't know this uh, very well. I know that they have great museum though. <laughs> oh, and there's also Port Mayo. Yeah. If anyone would actually dare to take. I'm going to get in trouble for this. Ryanair. Oh, yeah. Don't, no, yeah, don't, don't put names. <laughs> People are going to, yeah, if you'd like to go to, uh, to Beauvais and if you need to go to Beauvais, yes, Port Mayo is yeah, there. But Port Mayo is also the place where you have some, a lot of Congress, you have a lot of uh, trade shows and, uh, and sometimes you have like shows uh, around. So, okay, let's jump to the, to the last uh, three around this month. Let's start with the, the 18. I leave you the floor for that because I know that no <laughs> matter is your baby. Ay, ay, ay. The 18th. I have lived in the 18th for over 20 years. I have moved over that period of time, but always within the 18th and normally only five minutes from where I lived before. So I guess to say that I like this area is probably an understatement. And actually, The reason why actually I wanted to live in the 18th when I moved there dates back to when I very, the very first time that I ever visited Paris. I was in my 20s and I came here and I just felt enamored with uh, the whole Montmartre neighborhood, uh, Sacre Coeur and Place du Tertre. And I just, I found the area so charming and really village like that I just adored it, where there were other parts of Paris uh, at that same visit that I didn't like at all. And I thought, oh, I don't really like Paris. I only like Montmartre. Well, now <laughs> I do like the rest of the city as well, too. <laughs> But it took me some time to really appreciate the rest of the areas. So for me, the 18th, automatically, I think of Sacré-Cœur, Place du Terre, the Moulin Rouge, Abbesse. Uh, th that's what comes to mind straight away. That's the kind of romantic part of Paris uh, that you think of. And uh, in the 18th, you've also got people talk about the hills and the stairs of the 18th, but you can get around easily. Contrary to popular belief, you don't always have to go up and down the stairs because when my daughter was a baby and she was in her push chair and I was you know, taking her around on the, on the slopes of uh, Montmartre, I always did it without going up and down stairs. So you can always do it without stairs, contrary to popular belief. Having said all of that about the 18th, there's definitely areas that people know less, that maybe they might feel a little less comfortable. There's definitely, you know, there are sketchy 
parts of every every single district of Paris, but I, I like it. It's also got the Marché Saint-Pierre, which is the... Yeah, for the fabrics. The best fabric bought in all of Paris. If you, if you buy textiles for any reason, it's the best place to go. Yeah, especially because it's not wholesale. You can really actually get, get some. Yeah, for me, I have two of my best friends living there. And, uh, and yes, the view on Paris, like when you are at the Sacré Coeur and when you, you can overlook a big portion of the city. And it's, uh, it's very nice. It's, uh, it's like breathtaking when, when you, when you look at that. It's one of the areas that I like. And it's true that you have to, to it goes up and down and you can find your, your way around. <laughs> uh, you don't want to be at the Abbess uh, subway stop without an, the elevator walking because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> this, you are going to be in trouble. But no, it's, it, and it's true that you are, you have different, uh, okay, people are saying that some part of the ears are pretty trendy, some other are more popular and, but things are changing, um, and of course, gentrifying some sometimes. So it, it's an interesting area. Let's go for the 19th and the 20th arrondissement, which used to be, I remember, with touristic. I'm going back to the vacation rental industry because it gives a good idea of what people think about. Those arrondissements weren't back in 2005 in the in the touristic books. So people were just scared to be in those areas. So it's true that it's three different from the very center of Paris. It's true that it was primarily for working clients back in the in the years. Uh, even now, you have back in the day. Back in the day, but it's true that you have a, a, a good nightlife. You have a, a, a lot of shops and restaurants. If you go through the street of Oberkampf. So it can be a little wide at night when you have all the people going out and drinkings and everything, but it's a fun part. And you have also a very lively area it's a, and a, a family area also. And of course, for me, it's a Butchemont and Belleville and Méni de which I know maybe a little more than Butchemont. What about you, Gail? Yeah, definitely the Oberkampf area is great for dining, nightlife, and so on and so forth. It's really, really busy. The Parc uh, Bouchemont is really pretty. Even though I hardly go, honestly, to the 19th or the 20th, the Bouchemont is just gorgeous. It's got a nice, fun nightlife as well, too, with places like Rosa Bonheur and other places that are open really, really late. Yeah, when you are inside, you can feel that you are outside of the city, like you are really surrounded by green. So, it, but maybe not. Uh, you can be surrounded by Parisian also when uh, when the <laughs> sun start to to be out. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. And I mean, also to the, I guess people don't realize, they think that only the 18th is a big hilly area, but a lot of people don't realize how hilly the 19th can be as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's true. But you, you can really, when you start to, for the Rue Bourconf or Rue Mille Montant and you go up to the hill, yes, it's a, <laughs> it's a kind of, uh, no, Paris is not a flat, uh, a flat city. Definitely. Oh, yeah. And the 20th, yes. What, what about the 20th for you? Well, I really don't go very often, but we were just there in the 20th, actually, for a visit at a, at a place where we're having a special event not related to Paris, a state of mind. But uh, we were just there in the 20th. Yes, exactly. And this is going to be a great, uh, and uh, this is a typical example of like a, a place where you can have like some conferences, some concert, and you are right in the middle of the, of the city. So it's a uh, it's very in interesting area as well. Yeah, I have to get to know, I guess, the, the 20th a little bit better as well. I, I seem to know that a little bit less too, but yes. And I guess what we didn't talk about with all of those areas is the concept of Greater Paris. Yes, this will be probably for uh, maybe we can make a full episode because one of the things that you'd like to, to hear about is that now we have like the Greater Paris. That means that they have extended the subway lines in many direct, different directions. So you can be in the outskirts and be in Paris within a few, few subway stops. So it's really, it used to be the case, for example, in Boulogne or in Créteil, you have already the subway that goes pretty far, but they have extended that a little uh, further up, and it's going to be very interesting for the people who are living there. And going back a little on on uh, the real estate portion, that means that also people who have invested in those areas will see a, a very good value of, of what they purchase because uh, people are going to be more and more uh, tempted by, by being outside of the city, but very close to the city as well. Yeah, I think it's all about like accessibility. As long as you're close to, say, a metro line, um, so not 
an RER, a suburban train. But as long as you're close to an actual uh, metro line, it does make a difference. And yes, I imagine your property value uh, will be going up if you already have purchased in the greater Paris and are benefiting from some of these newly opened subway lines. We have uh, been uh, around the 20 arrondissements in those two episodes, uh, and I'm sure that there is many other things to say, but we thought that it could be like a good uh, uh, outlook on uh, on what it looks like. At least it's with our perspectives. We know that uh, we are completely biased, so <laughs> you, you, may, you may find other people giving a big shout out about the 16 arrondissements, for example, and those arrondissements where we are not that familiar with, but feel free to share that with us. And I'm sure that in the next episode, we'll have uh, more people to, to share about some specific areas. Yeah. And, and I think that the, the idea was just to give people a, an overview, you know, because if you're planning on moving here or buying here, you might want to have an overview, even though, yes, it's our biased overview, but an overview of the different areas. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gail. Have a great day, Marie. You too. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Thanks for listening to Paris, A State of Mind, featuring Gail of Perfectly Paris and Marie of Lokim, both who are founding members of the SPLM. Paris, A State of Mind is produced by Paris Underground Radio. The music, Jazz in Paris, is by Media Right Productions. For more information on this show and others, go to parisundergroundradio.com. This episode of Paris' State of Mind was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content, join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Paris Underground Radio.